Hey everyone, the good, the bad and the buggy here giving a story analysis of Pyre. Uh, it's going to be very spoiler heavy, so if you want to avoid spoilers, maybe check out our spoiler free review of the game. But in this video, we're not going to be talking about gameplay at all. We've covered that extensively in our review. This is just going to be a story analysis. Quick breakdown of our review. We don't like the gameplay, but the story has merits for it. Mm -hmm. So here's pretty much what we think of the story. So to start off, shall we talk about the setting, the game world? Yeah, let's. Yeah. I, I like the game world. They've made a really rich world with a lot of backstory mm. and it goes into quite a lot of depth on all the areas but there is one thing that you brought up earlier that we don't agree with they make the downside the area where you are sound like this really horrible dingy dark place where no one wants to be mm. yet when you're traveling around it you're like actually this doesn't look so bad yeah. okay there's a few massive dead bodies scattered around and there's a few poisonous swamps and inhospitable areas but there's grassland yeah. there's animals there's food there's people there's towns in general, you just never... There's one moment where your caravan gets attacked, literally one, by some native wild animals, and this kind of thing never happens again. Yeah. You never really get the impression or the feeling that where you are is really that dangerous or horrible to live. Yeah, and there's talk early on at the start going, oh, we won't have enough food to go around, we might be able to spare a few mouthfuls of food. But then that's it, it's never mentioned again that food mm. could ever be an issue. Yeah. Apart from when there's a cooking question, like, oh, what do you want to eat? today and you've got three options of food and you're like wow why, why, why we're fully it? stocked we've got a menu that's yeah. how much food we've got why do i care what food my imaginary character eats because you never actually see yourself mm. it was just a bit weird i apart from that i really liked the background and everything it did look all really nice yeah the artwork was really well done and traveling around it was a joy and reading about the background like they've done a lot of lore and reading about the background of the world not only the downside but the commonwealth as well and as well as the commonwealth you've got the high ring the high wing remnants yeah. which there wasn't loads about but you get enough of a description to get an idea of what the whole deal is the evil harpies that don't like humans basically well they're not necessarily evil more just aggressive anyways yeah the, the background on the setting is a really great place to be there's talk of gods and titans and the end of the world and all mm. your regular shenanigans but there's a few bits in the story which I found really grating as well. Well let's get to those procedural values. <laughs> we get started with the story. Yeah so basically you've been cast out of the commonwealth and you're just lying. Are you in the middle of the desert? I think yeah you start from in the yeah. desert area so you're basically in the middle of the desert. Yeah which was a bit weird because apparently you've been cast down a waterfall and then you end up in a desert which I found very very weird. Somewhere along those lines you would have had to take quite the fall. <laughs> you hit a yeah. bouncy castle <laughs> and skimmed across the water and just ended plop into this desert. But anyway, apart from that, yeah, it, it was a bit weird. So then this caravan approaches and they, these three masked people find you. Mm. And they're like, hey, come join us. Can you read a book? And you're like, yeah, sure, I can read. Why not? And then you saw he kind of just progresses from there. I bet right, the game doesn't really give you much impression as to what's normal and what's not. Because you get greeted by, like I said, these three people, but they're not humans. One of them is. But then the other one's a a literally dog. a dog. <laughs> with and a moustache. He does have a good moustache. With a moustache, yeah. So he's got that going for him. And then the other one is this huge demonic looking woman. And you later on find out that the dog people they're actually pretty normal that they're they're an established race they're fine whereas the demon woman they're in the commonwealth anyway they're pretty unheard of it they're only heard of in the downside so being a newcomer to the downside this should be like new and shocking but then you don't know how to react because this is all new to you but then you're being treated as if you're an established like a character that's used to all this that's used to what they should be used to in the commonwealth and stuff like that so you really don't know how to react to things that you're given yeah for once i miss the spoon feeding that rpgs will give you like here's a little bit of the story here's a bit of background here's it like a nibbly little bit mm. but that fleshes out the rest of your understanding of this world it's like reading was a crime and mm. so you're one of the few literate people so that's why all of a sudden can you read is a big deal yeah i was like yeah i can read you're making me read all this text yes <laughs> so progress the story please yeah so the game does try and explain a lot of things but it's mainly just in tool tips along the dialogue where it's like oh highlight commonwealth to hear about what the commonwealth is in the two lines or hey read a description short description of this character or whatever but it's it's not enough yeah it, at the start it's very 
very vague, mm. which made me ask a lot of questions. Mm. And even in, when you're in the caravan looking at the nice drawn artwork, and there's a random guy on the floor, so you try and click on him, and it's like, oh, you sense he's living. Oh, fucking poke him, and we can walk on and have a chat with him, you know? But you can't, it just keeps going, you sense he's living. Yes, he's fucking alive, but throw what and do something. Oh, are we not worried about the potentially comatose man in our caravan? <laughs> but then no one else is. <laughs> It, it, it's a bit weird, then it goes on that you just find a random girl hiding underneath the caravan, and everyone's like, the fuck is this girl doing? And then, should we send her away, or should we invite her in? But, oh, we might not have enough food. But, nah, fuck it, we'll just have it because mm. she's a crazy girl. It's not really explained why she came on board, and she can't even remember her name, so you just kind of pick a name. Yeah, which felt a bit mean, because... How did she react when you picked her names? We both picked different names. Because she was like, Yay, that is my name. You got it right. I remember now. Oh, because I picked gay because that <laughs> seemed like... Because, no, because gay the grey seems like something a pack of immature bullies would shout at yeah. someone. And she goes out of her way to say she was bullied a lot. So like, yeah, that, I'm sure gay the grey is probably something they yeah. shout at. And she was like, yeah, that's my name. I was like, wow, I, yeah. I guess your name by being a horrible person. Then she goes like, oh yeah, they call me Shay the Shoddy. And <laughs> what? Yeah, like... <laughs> I only picked Shay because I've been trying to catch up on Game of Thrones, so I'm only on season four at the moment playing catch up again, and Shay is quite a prominent character in it, so I was like, well, this won't get so confusing if you've got Shay. So I, I just went with that, and it, it kind of just rolls with it, which I'm fine with. It's nice to have a bit of asserting your will over your companions and having a bit of their own development, but it was just weird. I did enjoy when you used gay in the basketball games and the announcer person, the voice, when he says their names as you pick them, I went to pick it for mine, I was just like, GAY! <laughs> that just shows your maturity. <laughs> Um, so, but yeah, when you mentioned before, well, when you pick up Gay or Shay, whatever you call her, and one of your characters, I think it's Hedwin or Jodariel, mentions, like, oh, well, I suppose we could just a bit of food for another mouth to feed. It's like, well, this is another aspect, this inconsistency, where it's mentioned, oh, this world's inhospitable to live, but then it's never brought up again. It yeah. never makes any impact properly to the game or the story. Yeah, it never made me feel, made me feel stranded in a world mm. that I, like, oh my god, God, I'm a newcomer here, I've been cast aside. <gasps> oh no! I was just like, yeah, it's, that's cool. Yeah, then, as I was saying about the comatose guy on the floor, not long after finding the girl, he wakes up. And apparently this is a big deal, because everyone is like, oh my god, he's fucked off, we're like, we've got to find him. It's like, and, you didn't care about him before, why are we caring now? Yeah, so it's a it's a little bit weird, but you're like, okay, there's a sense of urgency, we've got to find this sleepy man, because he's woken up. And I presumed it was a bad thing that he's woken up, but apparently he's just a minstrel, so... But then when you're hoping that you'll actually finally hear something about him, Hedwin turns out and like, no, you just worry about where we're going next, we'll deal with it. No! Give me some information! <laughs> yeah. Why do you want me to find this guy? I don't know, he, he's got a lute. That's cool, he might play music. Which was a nice touch, you know, you could click on the lute and it Oh yeah, I noticed that. And noticed you could get him to play a song at a few points. Which was quite nice, you know, he did his job. Which, as far as many shows go, that's pretty easy, I'd imagine. <laughs> he doesn't have much else to do, he just meanders around, sings every now and then, and has a few lines of dialogue with a gate woman. Well then, about the hosp inhospitable world, you get attacked by these creatures called howlers, which until this point you're like, oh my god, we've got to be on the lookout for howlers, make sure they don't get us, there could be howlers over there, let's not go that way. And they're built up to be this evil force. Yeah. Something to be feared and... Something not very nice to encounter yeah. anyway, that's typically encountered a lot, is the impression you're given. Yeah, but when you do finally encounter them, they were just cute little jumping creatures that slowly jumped up my caravan. Mm. And in my game, it made the random creature Easy girl, fight them for no reason. Like everyone was yeah. like, "Oh, I'm too tired to fight them," and she's like, "Let me do it. Let me do it." So you're like, "Yeah, okay, you can fight them. We'll you who we'll we sacrifice the lunatic. <laughs> you who we know nothing about, and yeah, we're just gonna have a nap because I'm tired and I don't want to defend the caravan from these evil howlers. And when they come jumping at you, you're like, "You guys aren't bad at all. You're kind of cute. It's and just weird." But then the inconsistency comes back because nothing like this ever happens again. You're never bothered by howlers again. Oh, they're not even mentioned. No. Like, there's even a spell that will turn your imp into a howler and increases movement speed and stuff. Which I like, sure that's a good thing. If howlers can be trained to fight your battles, get more howlers. Well, Unleash the howlers upon people. Well, then what are howlers? Are howlers just like evil drive imps? Are they, are they like, are they, oh my god, are they the gremlins? And when you feed <laughs> drive imps after midnight, do they turn into howlers? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, they're, they're not really explained very well. Yeah. I don't know, then the driving comes along, and he's kind of cute. I liked him. Like, he has no lines of dialogue, he just literally makes a noise, and you've got to mouse over that to translate. So, sort of like, get an impression of, yeah. from his body language, what he's signifying, which is a pretty cool idea. Yeah. Um, he was one of the most engaging characters, I thought. <laughs> which is weird, considering. Line. Yeah, he, he never says anything. Mm. Apart from screaming, yeah. and things like that, which will be it. <laughs> Whatever that means. So you're not an impact bomb. You need to mouse over. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, one thing. Oh, one thing that we have skipped over accidentally is the first basketball match. Oh. Now, as I said before, we're going to avoid talking about gameplay. But in that first basketball match, first of all, like you're suddenly thrust into this controlling thing where it's like, okay, all these three people are pretty much just fine. It's like, right, okay, we're happy to let you be in charge of us. It's like, why? Yeah. <laughs> Because you can read, you will now tell us exactly what you want us to do. What qualifications? Like, even, okay, sure, I can read, which is apparently a rare commodity in this world. Okay, I can accept that. But what, how does that qualify me to manage this basketball team? You are now fearless leader and coach. <laughs> Um, I don't know, do they have managers in basketball? Well, I assume so. I don't know. Coaches. I'm just thinking like it's football where the manager shouts. Well, yeah, they'll, like. they'll, they'll have a manager or a yeah. coach that gives them tactics. I don't know, we're like not that. American, we don't understand basketball. Though. <laughs> Apparently, Apologies. I understand that sports teams generally have coaches. <laughs> yeah, so they have a coach, but then like, are they called coaches or managers? Well, they're essentially the same thing. Okay. We've got sidetracked. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but one of the other things was, apart from that, also in this first match, you get a bit of heat from the opposing leader who starts like addressing you guys addressing you and your team as if you've met before he starts giving you like he's like oh because of you i'm stuck down here you thwarted me last time and i'm stuck down here ah i can't believe you dead show your face going, ah, rah, 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 rah. He you like, and you're sat there it's like okay is this another instance where this is something i have to assume is okay in the world like this is something i have to assume is okay or is this something that i'm supposed to accept is weird because i don't know whether this is something that's happened or not yeah. because i haven't been given told parts of the story like it's been happened before yeah, it, it makes you think like, oh, is this one of those games where it's everything's happened once and this is like the 15th cycle of these events transpiring. Um, I like the whole Matrix all over again where you're now going to rebuild Scion for the 15th million time because reasons. Yeah, so it leads you into a bit of thinking like that, but then, I don't know, does that carry on throughout the game? I thought that they kind of just faded that storyline out slowly. Wait, which storyline? The one where it's teasing going, this could have happened before. Oh, sort yeah. of teasing. I think that was unintentional, to be honest. My opinion, what I gathered is the whole idea that this was all happening before, like, this has all happened before and it's happening again and again, kind of like a uh, bastion away. That was just unintentional. I mean, technically, this has happened before. It's just not in the, like, grand way we assumed it was. Because, as I said, well, the way that this Lendl guy, the one that accuses you of thwarting his escape the previous time, he addresses you as if it was literally you. No, he just means that it was the same team. Yeah. <laughs> like, just with completely different people. <laughs> so, you're just sat there, it's like, uh, suddenly getting this idea, it's like, oh no, we're going to have a whole, yeah, like, bastion situation Ooh. which will happen. And then, um, the crystal ball that you get given, that kind of reinforces it as well, because she has a few lines that makes you think, oh, this has happened once before. Yeah. But then it hasn't. She's literally talking about your team as well. Eventually, like, the game clarifies, like, oh, no, 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 it's nothing as grand as that. No, no, they're literally just people that have walked the same yeah. team colours you're not you getting a hand-me-down vote <laughs> <laughs> it's got a few patches and it's faded a bit now mm. but you'll, you'll make it look good again yeah, then there's the old empire as well, which is like what came before the Commonwealth. So it's a bit, it's the same old. It was the Grand Empire, but now shit's gone wrong in it, and the leader's fucked off because mm. the leader went mad with power, and he just went a bit crazy, and everything else declined and fell apart without him. This is all yeah. tied into not just the backstory of the old empire and the Commonwealth, but the backstory of the whole game, really, because. The old empire crumbling and their leader coming down to the downside to do whatever crazy stuff he wants to do, and then becoming one of these eight scribes who then toured up and down the land, taking out the titans, and then discovering a way to escape from the downside, who then used that way to escape to help other exiles escape, who they then taught their ways of mercy and whatever to establish the commonwealth. It's all tied together, yeah. which is all nice and dandy, I suppose. Yeah, it all just feels like it's been.
been done before. Mm. I mean, I, I don't want anything groundbreaking, but it was just a bit... Uh, even Grim Dawn has done this with, <laughs> like, the skeleton people. Yeah. Uh, was, even when an action RPG has done this before, you're just like, oh, surely with this fantastic sort of world that you've done, you could have done something a little bit, I don't know, more. I mean, it felt like watching Avatar again, where you're like... It's all visually impressive. But... Yeah, but some bits are just, why Why have you done it? It was very cliched at the times. Bear in mind, though, we are talking about the oh, the, the general story, because... Yeah, it's background stuff. It, mm. it doesn't really affect yeah. you. Yeah, because the specific... Because in terms of like specific characters and their character development and their individual character storylines, I thought in general pretty well done. Like, they're strong and, and nice. Yeah, know. apart from Hedwin, who's a very, <laughs> very vanilla character. Yeah. It's like the Alistair of Dragon Age. Oh, no, I liked Alistair. Alistair was <laughs> great. <laughs> Alistair was the comic relief. Yeah, but he was just... Hedwin didn't have comic relief. Don't oh. you dare compare Hedwin to Alistair. In fairness, I did get rid of Hedwin as soon as... Yeah, Hedwin... He, was actually, Hedwin he was my Hedwin. second character to go. That's a lie. I got rid of Joe Danner first. Oh, why? She was slow. <laughs> <laughs> She was slow and moody, and I was just like, I can't deal with you. Get gone. Because when you get to the end, as it were, you can choose to send one of your characters free. Mm-hmm. And then replay the game again, and again, and again, until you sent more free. But, um, yeah, when you choose to send one of them free, that's them gone from your game. And then you get given a scroll from a messenger imp who's right. flowing back down mm-hmm. to say they're all nice and happy and doing great in their newfound life. But it's okay, because they joined the Resistance. Did you ever get a message where it's like, nah, they, they just fucked off the Resistance and did their own thing? No, but I I really wish I did. Yeah. Because even the dog was like, oh, he was promised wealth and riches and this, that, and the other, but then he turned it down. I was like, well, I always thought the dog was a bit of a dick, so I kind of wanted him to do it, just be like, oh, there's a spanner in the work. I oh, shouldn't have set the dog. I, I thought the dog was a nice, light-hearted rogue. Oh, I just found him annoying. Oh, I liked it. I liked his little moustache. <laughs> I liked his moustache, but that's about as far as it went. I didn't really like the dog mm. very much. But then it kind of like progresses a story with your following instructions from this Sandalwood. Sandalwood? Mm. What's Sandalwood. That? Sandalwood, yeah. Yeah, fairly early on, this Sandalwood guy gets mentioned, and this is one of the irritating things about the games and we mentioned before with the the lone minstrel who was sleeping in the car you don't really get any opportunities to approach your companions whenever you like and ask them questions which you would obviously ask a normal person would go up to your companions and fairly quickly say who's this comatose guy in the, in the caravan <laughs> who's this sandalwood guy you keep talking about Please. why are we following his instructions to the letter mm. like why why are we doing these rituals yeah explain something to me instead yeah. even if it gave you the opportunity to do this and the characters are like look we'd love to help you but we're kind of busy right now like ask us again another time so but fine at least you've acknowledged the fact that we wish to ask these questions but you haven't even acknowledged that yeah and there's a few instances of where you ask a character something and they're just like, we don't know because of reasons. Mm. Um, say we're escaping the downside. At some point, uh, after the length of the lie guy and getting the crazy grey haired girl, uh, you encounter this enemy dog team. Uh, I think they're called the Dissenters or something like that. Uh, the dogs. That's how I just saw them. Yeah, the, I like the music. The music in that. <laughs> yeah, that was like the one. Yeah. That was the one game of basketball that I actually liked because the music was pretty upbeat and cool. But um, what I like, one of the things I like about this game is that as well as developing each individual character's backstory, they could develop sort of new little sort of storylines with other people's teams, which actually made you want to hear more, not only about your own characters, but characters from the other teams as well. Oh yeah, like, if you made your dog fight against the other dog team, mm. it would start to unlock dialogue between the two dogs. Yeah. And or, you'd find out a bit of history there, and you're like, oh, this is interesting. Yeah. Or if you uh, played against, again, Crazy Grey Haired Girl, against Oh, the fates or the yeah, the fates with the dad, dog, and the human yeah. child. Yeah, which I'm a bit concerned about how that's happened. But <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it gets explained, I think, in the in the law somewhere, either in the book or by Sandalwood later on. The the dog, the cur had adopted this year. Yeah, I presumed he was adopted. <laughs> that brings me on to another problem, actually. The game doesn't do a very good job of explaining when specific events happened. So, fairly early on, 
it gets mentioned that John Dario had adopted Hedwin as a child, but it doesn't actually say when it happened. So for half the game, I was assuming that Hedwin had just been dropped into the downside as a child, which I felt was a bit harsh. <laughs> and John Dario had just picked him, picked him up at some point, because it's also mentioned fairly early on that demons are basically humans that have spent a long time in the downside. Uh, so I was like, oh, okay, clearly she's fished out this child and downside looked after him. It was like, but no, a lot later on is clarified in a book or in the oh, book. Oh, he was a soldier. Book. Yeah, it's clarified that she was a soldier. She adopted him in, in the Commonwealth and he grew up under her care, but then she got tossed in the downside at some point, and then a lot later on, he got tossed in the downside as well. Yeah. And they just happened to meet up later on. So. Yeah, it's a bit... Everything just seems to have happened. There's no clarification anywhere along the lines of, oh, this happened at one year, and this happened four years later. It's yeah. just, oh, he was getting on with a harpy, and then he got chucked out. Yeah. And uh, now we know that story, and just carry on. Mm-hmm. And that's his motivation to getting back, because he wants to bang some harpy chick. I think he was a bit more eloquent than that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the story of it um. <laughs> Oh, what about peace between the harps and the humans? Well, he didn't give a shit. Well, they're not really humans because they're the Commonwealth, they're a collection of races, but you know what I mean? He didn't care. He's for peace. He just wanted to get lead. Wow. That's pretty much his motivation. I thought you thought head with him so vanilla. That is pretty vanilla. <laughs> 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 I, yeah, there are just some bits I, I, I wish I'd explained better. Mm. Then you eventually get pulled into, like, you find this sandalwood eventually. Eventually. Yeah, he, he immediately does the cliche thing of like, right, I'm in charge, we don't need you anymore thanks for your service but fuck off mm. and you're like no bitch i'm here to stay you or, will... or you could just be a massive wimp off and say oh all right then fine oh i did choose that option just to see what happens <laughs> did they just let you go <laughs> no they're like well bitch please you ain't getting rid of this chick like she's she's fine she's one of us because <laughs> right. i chose to be a girl i want to see if i had an impact in the game and i'm pretty sure it didn't but they just kept calling me she anyway so like whoa we're having this chick you're not kicking her out like this she's one of us now so you can shut up boss man we know we're in your caravan and you're technically the boss but and she's now the boss we've been following literally everything you said to the letter but on this one this one we're finally gonna say no. yeah now we've just immediately found you and you've established yourself back in charge except she's still in charge because we listened to her because she can read except he can read as well questions <laughs> but which are not answered really he just kind of gets a bit shoppy and he's like fine whatever you can stay and he does the whole slowly warming to you oh you're getting better you're better than I expected oh I might have been wrong about you now my friend I love you sort of it does the whole cliche mm. typical every single film yeah cop films spring to mind <laughs> they always do this <laughs> like if it was a film I would have walked out a half hour because nothing's getting explained you walk out of a lot of films don't you only a film TV. <laughs> if I paid for them, I would watch it. But <laughs> yeah, so then it reveals that he's got a plan. Does it reveal it then that his plan is to cause a revolution? Um, I don't think he fully. It's heavily implied that there's more to what he's doing. Like there's more to his general scheme. But I don't think he fully explains his plan till you get to the mountain for your first yeah. uh, liberation right? Yeah, because your motivation until then is that you're trying to escape from the downside. Yeah, you you and everyone else have been led to believe that once you get to the end of your travels, you'll all be able to go free when you, free when you pull it off. But then later on, it's revealed. revealed. It's not a team game anymore. It's mm. now Hunger Game style. Mm. Esque. <laughs> Except it's like down to popular vote, and lo and behold, the only vote is yours. Yeah. Welcome to the dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> it works out you were freely voted in, which is the best sort of dictatorship, yeah. I think. <laughs> we voted for our dictator, and we love our dictator, so we will follow our dictator. Yeah, I would have liked if the characters went, oh, pick me. Come on, what the fuck? I've been here for 25 years, I've been fucking horns. Let me escape. Oh. Like, I'd have preferred that sort of aggro. Instead of like, oh, don't pick me. I'm not ready to go free yet. But it's such a bad place to be. You want to be free, surely? Instead of like the worm bag going, no, I'm still repenting for my sins. I failed my honour. I must serve my time. Yeah. And the dog guy's like, oh, I want to go see me mom. Like, what? That's your motivation? If this is such a bad place to be, get more fired up than, I lied to me mom. Let us go, please. Which is what the dog genuinely said to me towards the end. I'm like, oh, yeah. fine, you can piss off. Just because you're crapping the child, the right things. I didn't enjoy playing as a dog. Oh. Except I did find like a suicide scroll where you'd quit it and when you die, you're... <laughs> you were just perpetually <laughs> murdering the dog. That's what he turned into because it was really fast and you get the scroll and you can equip it and power it upload. So when your character gets banished, he will do like an AOE banishment. Wasn't that the whole point of Teaser? Yeah, but I prefer doing it as a dog. <laughs> 
Wow. <laughs> because T is at least had like a... blowing up dogs. No, because T also from... had a good AOE. <laughs> And the dog was just better at it. It was so, faster than Teaser, and Teaser could fly and then easily drop the ball. I was like to point out, out, of the two of us, you're the one that actually owns a dog. I'm also saying that my dog will get stuffed up. Well, not so much. He's rubbish. <laughs> no, no, no. Anyways, we got sidetracked. Yeah, do you think? <laughs> just a bit. But then it gets revealed that like, only one of you go free. Yeah. Which is not... You could see that twist coming a mile off. I could definitely see something along those but lines coming, yeah. at the same time, I didn't want it to happen because I got really tired of the basketball games. And then it makes you do yeah. the basketball games all over again. See, we're trying really... It's hard to split up our feelings from the story or our feelings from the game because we end up... Because sometimes you'll get really tired with the story, but it's not necessarily because of the story. It's because you just have to do this, the bloody basketball games. You don't games. want to wait for the on the line and dialogue. <laughs> Then in the story, there's like lots of similarities between all the scribes of one of each race, so your team must comprise of one of each race because you'll set a good example. And that's all part of Sandalwood's plan of, oh, you're going to start a revolution by being really nice guys, basically. When everyone gets free, you have to just be nice, and then you're going to lead a peaceful revolution. Although it's also said in the law that the Nightwings were set up, because all of the teams, each team was supposed to represent one of the scribes, whereas the Nightwings, they were supposed to be an adversary for all of these teams to fight against. Like you, at first, you think this whole each game of basketball you're playing is part of a general league where only the two best will fight out at the end. But no, it turns out that like no matter how bad you are, you will always get to that liberation right because you're the one that the other teams are fighting against. Like you're their adversary. Yeah. So, which makes it really unfair on the other teams. But surely everyone just well, wants to be at your team because then you always get a shot at giving free. But no, that's that's the point though because you're supposed to be the bad guy in this respect because it it's explains in the law that in order to earn their freedom and become better people, uh, they have to overcome uh, a stronger adversary. So that's the whole point. That's why your guys are so much more favoured, why you're generally better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in the story, you're trying to fight as the good guys because you're trying to set people free to lead a rev- peaceful revolution that will stop people getting banished from the nice commonwealth. Oh, I don't care about that. They just want to get free. Yeah, but it just doesn't make sense. And also, your team gets disbanded a while because of Sandalwood lost his mate. One of them died, one of them thought died, and one of them got set free. And he's like, oh, I'm really sad now. I'm going to disband my team because of that. And then no one else continued the league. Well, no, because then it said that you can't. Because like I said, in the final right, you have to fight against the Nightwings. So if the Nightwings don't exist, then there can't be any final right. Surely anyone else could have tracked him down and went, oh, you bitch, I'm having this book. I want to get free. I'm starting up the Nightwings. Ain't nothing you can do to stop me. And continued. Apparently. I would have just refounded the Nightwing, so I could bloody go free. Apparently no if one. No one, one is so much <laughs> no one thought to do that. Yeah. Although I think I can't remember who says it specifically, but I think it's mentioned somewhere that like when Sandal disbanded the team, he hid the wagon and all the supplies somewhere, so maybe like Yeah, he's a like, massive arsehole. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> like, he just denied everyone's freedom for years. Mm-hmm. It's not specified how long. Again, reiterating the problem, it's never specified in terms of time when things happen. But he's a tree, so he can't really age and die. Well, I suppose he could, but he could. he's a bloody tree. He could last a long time, which is kind of mean. Mm. And you die if you're in the downside eventually? Because I know people turn into demons get hurt. Yeah, exactly. Well, what is, d- 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 is this like the hell? Where? What is this? I know you get sent down a waterfall from the Commonwealth and you end up in this place. But there's freaking stars. So how have you gone underground? Or where are you? <laughs> it was weird because there's stars in the sky that you follow. But if you've been sent down a waterfall, that, to me that means you're underground. Yeah. Like you're in some weird cave with stars. And a sea. I know you can get underground rivers and stuff, but... And trees, how are they growing? And sunlight and all this. And why can't is, you just fly out? Because you're not flying <laughs> off. There's a, t- there's a ton of really elaborate mirrors set up at the top of the really <laughs> deep cave. So, it's an amazing optical illusion, really. <laughs> yeah, it, these things are... At the first, you won't notice them, but after a while, when you start thinking about the game, and when you unlock the flying car, you're like, why can't I just fly out of here? At which point the game then scrambles to explain why you can't get out of here. It's like, oh, well, the reason the harps can't get out, all the harps can't get out, is because they get the wings clipped before they get chucked down. And, and the reason the car can't fly out of here is just, it, it can't. Apparently, despite it being some kind of technological marvel in terms of the setting, it can't quite get out that way. Right at the end of the game, the other tree guy. The other tree guy. The rich, there's a, the rich tea, tree guy. The chastity. The bad tree man. The, the one that's generally an asshole. <laughs> um, it's revealed, assuming he doesn't get free in a right, that he pretty much bankrupts his family for his family by spending all the money trying to build these elaborate contraptions to get out, and none of them work. 
Yes. Which leads... But it doesn't say why they don't work, it just says they don't work. Yeah, so, okay, is it because... Is there a physical reason why they don't work, or is there some kind of mystical, magical reason? But... Which is sort of hinted at with the imp messengers, which can somehow get out. But then they can't make the final cross. Yeah. Maybe there's some force fear with that lets you send... I stick your hand out, grab mm. a message, deliver parcels and food and all these other things and speak between. Yeah. But you can't physically pass, even though you can just hand over a letter. Yeah. The, it's the, very, the, very... Th the actual physical details are never specifically mentioned. Yeah. All it's mentioned is like, these imps can get close, close enough to deliver a message somehow, but not actually stick themselves through. Yeah, it... I would have preferred it if it just went, the gods have said, no, this is your hell. You will rot in here for all eternity and... Fuck it, you cannot cross this invisible line that I've choked on the ground. <laughs> that would have been better instead of just, you can't. Because I just spent the whole time going, I've got a fucking flying house. Fly me up this waterfall and get me out of here. Why do I have to go through all these fucking bullshit rides to get out of here? Which isn't really explained very well. Mm. Which is a little bit annoying. And another thing that's not really explained is when the, your tree guy finally joins your team, the voice, the mythical voice, comes and says, Oh, you have a tree to in your midst now. Grrr. Mm. Which yeah. is very cliche in a way. It's cliche and it was also confusing. There's a couple of there's a couple of moments in the dialogue where because they've been deliberately abstract with things for whatever reason, whether it's see I've got a confession, mate. I hate it in movies and games and stories in general where they spoon feed you too much with things because like why are you explaining all this obvious stuff to this character who would obviously know that because he's from the same setting but then they go too far in the other direction with this yeah. game I feel where they've been deliberately vague and abstract about things I was like look you're gonna have to help me out here I really don't know what you're talking about <laughs> and this is one of them where the voice says like oh you've got a traitor in your midst it's like, so hang on wait are you talking about like as in there's literally someone working against me in my team or do you mean a traitor to you or do you mean later on I thought maybe he meant that the Aralok is it guy the guy uh, your the Aralok I think is the yeah, name the, the, something the, like that the demon who used to play for the same team as Sandalwood which you thought day. was dead yeah, but he he's not dead. dead oh my god surprise so yeah which one of these three is the traitor is it is it some new traitor of Sandalwood or him like who's the traitor yeah. <laughs> I presumed it was Sandalwood because he's just joined my team and now the voice said oh there's a traitor in your midst I assumed it was Aralok because it happened around the same time yeah but it's not really explained very well mm. and either way it's calling him a traitor to the commonwealth because he could read and he's trying to start this revolution which the voice doesn't like because the voice is now king of the commonwealth who it's later revealed uh, the voice is actually one of the other guys who was on the Sandalwood's team yeah. the Nightwings back in the day but actually like made up the liberation right properly unlike poor Aurelac which I thought okay this is a kind of it's a cliche setup but it's pretty cool you know I'm um, looking forward to some more coming like you know this guy who's done everything you've done and then you get right to the end game and he reveals some like grand philosophy or grand truth which you haven't considered before it's like oh god maybe everything I've been doing hasn't been such a good idea after all after yeah. all well, at least makes you consider the other side's point of view but no yeah I like thought that. genuinely that oh my god the revolution mm. is awful I'm actually helping murder people oh I'm yeah. such a bad person but no you're actually still the good guys mm. which I was looking forward to being the unwilling bad guy yeah I thought oh that would have been a better one where Sander Woods revolution is really a new dictatorship on the rise he's gonna assassinate everyone dig his own way out betray you all at the end and be like ha ah, fuck you bitches <laughs> and he becomes a new voice that smites you all and dictates over the commonwealth which i thought would have been a cool ending instead of all the goody two shoes that we got unless you were really 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 bad at basketball which i failed to believe <laughs> I don't think there'll be many people who lose many games of basketball. And I'm really sorry if you're one of them. Just in general, we're really sorry. Yeah, I'm really sorry. <laughs> but, but the typical betrayed enemy returning, who you thought were... Or the betrayed friend returning, who you thought was dead, who isn't dead. Enough of the cliches, they've thrown in so many. There's just too many cliches in here, yeah. And it got a bit annoying after a while. It also felt a bit against his character because he's from Sandalwood's... Okay, admittedly, this is from Sandalwood's perspective, so it may indeed be a flawed perspective. But you get told that this uh, Aurelot guy was a really stand-up guy. He was really nice. He was a doctor. He was actively against fighting people. He hated war. Oh, that's that was why, why he got banished. That was yeah. why he got chucked out of it, because he refused to join front lines. And then throughout his time with Sandalwood, they were best chums, and they had very, very similar ideas. In fact... I think it's mentioned at some point that the two of them had concocted not quite the same plan, but a similar-ish sort of previous version of the plan that you're trying to implement in 
your playthrough. Uh, so the idea that admittedly he got betrayed pretty badly <laughs> by one of his teammates, that would definitely sting and suck. But the fact that you would come out of that, survive, and then just assume that like, oh, Sandalwood didn't like come diving down the waterfall after me to pick me up. Oh yeah, he got pushed off a cliff. Yeah, like it, <laughs> it would be pretty natural to assume, like, oh, okay, he's probably dead. So the fact that he didn't recover from that and then think, oh, okay, well, considering the great height that I fell from, it's probably fair. Oh, to into assume. the sea as well. Yeah. I... <laughs> It's probably fair to... I can understand why people would think I die. Okay, I'm not going to go on a massive revenge spree over this. No, no, no. He just throws all logic out the window despite yeah. that being totally against his character. At least the character that's been presented to you from Samuel's point of view. So yeah. it feels very forced. And he got as well in a hissy fit because another member of the Nightwing tried to steal his freedom moments. They had won the game. He was about to go free by jumping in the swimming pool when the other team member pushed him out the way, mm. jumped in the pool herself and died yeah. because she wasn't allowed to go in it. He fell off a cliff and Sandra Wood was just left alone going, oh shit, two of them just died. But Sandra Wood still gets blamed. Like he had a part in this. Yeah. Like he was holding him back as she jumped in the water. Some things just really went against the story, the which whole... is a shame because yeah. the story could have been really good. It was on the verge of something, and oh, the story about the Titans. <sighs> when it mentions the Titans, I'd be like, oh, there are these big mythical world destroying creatures, and if one of them comes back, it would destroy the world. But there was a bit of hint of truth, and the scribes did kill these mm. before, and if this one does come back, which it's hinted is on the comeback, the world's going to go sh to the shit. Supergiant, if you're watching this, why didn't you just do a game where you were playing as the scribes, taking out these big massive Titans? Yeah. <laughs> Just be like, that sounds a lot cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're now the re-embodiment of the scribes and the titans are coming back in another mm. form and oh my god, kill them. Yeah. And so make me play basketball, not basketball. Oh. <laughs> they were on the cusp of something so good. Then, I don't know, the artwork is fantastic, but then they just let it down with the story sometimes. And also, it says the stars are going out, yet when you're picking the next location to go, there's fucking millions of stars there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, a few inconsistencies with your own story. It's not hard just to make it all go black. Get on paint, call them all in. <laughs> oh, I did like how the slug was self-aware. The slug? The slug seller. The merchant slug. Wait, you self-aware? Well, he knows like, there's never any other customers apart from you. Oh, I know. And he no, cracks a few jokes about it, which I did like. Nah. Yeah. Just one of those random things like, oh, to be honest, you're my favourite customer. <laughs> you're my only customer. But I it, just wait for you the entire time. To be honest, his voice and the noise he would make was just annoying me, so I was like trying to get through his. <laughs> <laughs> I could click him and make Yeah, him. I like that. I thought that was a really good feature. <laughs> <laughs> In case you don't like him, just mute him. <laughs> I like how his face gets like a dead big mood as well when you yeah. tell him to show up. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> then you could click him and he's got a massive grin again. Like, no, I think they're all my issues with it right now. I feel like I've unburdened myself. <laughs> you finally got rid of it. <laughs> oh, and the orb woman. Why did she get pissy with you? Well, it does explain, like, if you check back with her a bit later, she does explain that um, because the stars were going out, that she she assumed that you would no longer have any use for her, and indeed, no one would have any use for her for a very long time. So she was getting pretty depressed about the idea of being stuck on her own again for a very long time. Which, to be fair, I could understand. Yeah, but no need to get pissy with me. I'm just trying to find out what the world is going on in the world. Well, I think we've talked a lot about <laughs> what we don't like. <laughs> well, I feel like I've unburdened a lot. Yeah, we've talked a lot about the overall story, I think. So, uh, you... In summary, <laughs> are we it's hard positive to... about this? In general, I come away from the story and the world and the characters' developments and backstories in a positive light. Bear in mind, I have to thoroughly ignore the actual game part of the game <laughs> to come to that light but I still come at all of that that I mentioned in a positive light but I would definitely not say it is Supergiant's best work in terms of story. I think if it was a smaller game and it teased the story like it did I'd want to play it again if it teased and gave you a bit more this time like if you what, played... teased but gave more yeah yeah like it answered more questions, but then asked a few more as well. Mm. And then if you had to do it like three times, and it was a small, short game, two hour burst, I'd be like, damn, baby. And then the game ended when you get to the first final raid battle. Mm. And then you could start it again. Yeah. And it tease a bit again. And it was only two hours long, it would be great. Yeah. Then I'd say, it's a good game. I'm intrigued, I will play this again. Mm. But not, not how they delivered it. No. It's firmly like Avatar. If you like it, you really like it. I imagine it swell your passion for basketball. 
basketball and <laughs> really cliche and obvious stories mm. where you could guess every single thing that's about to happen. You couldn't. You know you're going to be able to trade and the dead guy's going to return, etc., etc. You know just everything what's going to happen. You know hey, Edwin, Hayden, whatever his name is, is going to be a boring character. And you know that not everyone is going to go free. Like, it's not a, it's not a big reveal. And you know that yourself is not meant to go free. Like, you can just see that coming, that you're going to have to sacrifice yourself in some form or other. Because it's cool for the protagonist to sacrifice themselves these days. Yeah, but it has no emotional attachment. Like, not unlike the end of um, Halo Reach, where it teases you, oh, you could be Master Chief. Yeah. And you're like, oh my god, I'm Master Chief. And for the next 20 minute segment, you believe it. And then you're like, oh shit, are you? <laughs> you're going to save Master Chief, though. You're going to die on this fucking hill. With the cool guy in the anti-aircraft gun dead next to you. And that was a way to make you feel emotion when your character dies. Yeah. Or doesn't get to go free. Or something that made you feel. Yeah, it didn't... It got the adrenaline pumping and like, oh my god. It didn't make you involved enough to actually feel engaged with the story and with the characters, like you said. Like, yeah, it just needs to attach you to the characters more. Yeah. Like, just give you a little bit more in one go. Well... We call that the end? Yeah, we'll call that the end. Well, thanks for listening if you didn't listen for... Uh, if you managed to listen for... almost an hour or whatever it is now. Then you are a true fan and you deserve better than us. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of listening to us to rant about the story. Yeah. So, even if you persevere for five minutes, well done. Congrats. <laughs> you get gold stars all around. Thanks for listening, guys, and I'll see you next time. Yeah. Take care. See ya.